flow, in this video we're going to look at negative externalities. We got a market characterized by an inverse market demand curve of P equals 200 minus Q. The market supply, which is nothing more than the Marshall cost curve, is given by 80 plus Q. We're going to assume that the production of this good leads to a spillover cost or negative externality and that negative externality is going to be represented by this equation, this marginal external cost equals Q. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the competitive market outcome, um, the unregulated market outcome. Uh, that'll be our benchmark case. So in the competitive market, price will equal marginal cost or where demand intersects supply. So setting the price equation equal to the supply equation. Uh, we solve and get Q equals 60. Plugging that 60 back into the demand equation, the equilibrium price is 140. So that is the market outcome. This market outcome will be inefficient. Um, the, the inefficiency results from producing too much product, namely producing some units of output in which the true social cost exceeds the, uh, the, the benefit. Of those units. So in step two we're going to look at the socially optimal or efficient outcome. Uh, the socially optimal outcome takes into all the relevant costs of production, not only the private cost uh, but the marginal external cost. So to get the marginal social cost curve we're going to just take our MC equation and add to it the MEC equation. So the marginal cost equation plus the marginal external cost equation. Adding those up, we get 80 plus 2Q. So in equilibrium, efficiency will occur where price equals marginal social cost. Setting the price equation equal to our marginal social cost equation. Solving for Q, Q equals 40, which is a little bit lower uh, than we saw in example 1. And we get the price of 160, which is a little bit higher. Let's take a look at this graphically. So on the graph here, uh, we have our demand equation, uh, which is given by 200 minus Q. We have our marginal cost equation, or the private marginal cost. So in case one, we just found where supply intersects demand, or where marginal cost or price equals marginal cost. So the quantity was 60 and the price was 140. Again, we argued that this was not an efficient outcome. The efficient outcome will occur when all relevant costs are being accounted for, not only private but external. So the marginal social cost curve, which we got by adding marginal cost to the marginal external cost, intersects demand at a quantity of 40 and a price of 160. So that would be the efficient outcome given by a Q equal to 40 and a price equal to 160. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to find uh, a, a tax that would bring about this uh, optimal condition here, this socially optimal equilibrium. So in the last step here, we're going to find or ask what size per unit tax results in the socially optimal efficient outcome. At the efficient, uh, <coughs> excuse me, at the efficient output level, Q equals 40. The vertical distance between the two marginal cost curves, the marginal social cost and the private marginal cost, gives the correct size of the tax of $40. Looking back at this slide, this vertical distance here, just 160 minus 120, means that if we were to institute a $40 tax in this market, we would get to this efficient solution of a price of 160 and a quantity of 140. So to verify that $40 is the correct per unit tax, we're going to calculate a new marginal cost curve, a marginal cost that incorporates this $40 tax. So we take our marginal cost equation, the 80 plus Q, we're going to add to it $40. Okay, so 80 plus Q plus the tax of 40 gives us a marginal cost equation of 120 plus Q. Setting that 120 plus Q equal to our demand, we indeed get a quantity of 40 and a price of 160. So I hope you found this video on negative externalities helpful. I'll be doing a video shortly on positive externalities.